Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Phase 6. It's your boy, Sir Love. And since this is our first episode, I really wanted to make sure that uh, I gave you guys something, you know, that you can really take with you. You don't know me yet. We're building a relationship. So it was really all about the information. So uh, I'm starting this whole show off with a series called uh, Making Money, you know, Making Money in Music. Uh, we're going to start off with breaking down, breaking down some uh, basic stuff, which is uh, publishing. Publishing, licensing, royalties, uh, a lot of people really get confused about this stuff and what they don't understand is it starts day one in the studio. When you leave the booth, that's when it starts. A lot of people in this game don't understand that when you become a musician, when you decide to step into the music business, you're also deciding to be an entrepreneur in the exact same breath. Uh, so I want to make sure that you guys are prepared. So um, let's get the introduction. Let's get to it. I want to talk. Let's go. Come on and face You gotta be successful. No, 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 you gotta be no, 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 um, this whole music business works around songs, okay? You can argue that it works around artists because artists have to make the song and producers and stand a third. But at the end of the day, the business itself is made off of selling music, selling songs, okay? So uh, when you leave, the first thing that must be done is a split sheet, okay? And what a split sheet does, for anyone that doesn't know, it basically defines who did what in the record. Who, if there were five producers on the record, then it, it states who they were. If there was one writer, it states who they are, and it states what percentage uh, did these people contribute to getting the song done. So let's say it was five producers, and they all equally contributed, then it's five people again, 10%, right? Because the record is conceptually broken up into two halves, 50% to the writer, 50% to the producer. So if there are multiple producers, they're breaking up that 50. If it's multiple writers, they're breaking up that 50, and that's how you kind of get a general understanding of who did what, and you can kind of map out uh, who owns what percentage of the record based off of what they did. Now this is very important because if for any reason um, there's ever uh, an action uh, called on the record where people are saying, okay, this person didn't get paid or this person contributed and they're not listed, uh, the split sheet cuts all that noise and says, no, we all signed. Everyone that was in the room is right here, it's all signed. This is who gets what. Now if that isn't done, down the line there could be a person that was in the room working with you guys and said, nah, man, I, I wrote two lines in the hook, man, I need at least 2% of the record and you might go back and forth the money gets held up in collections nobody gets paid until the whole splits are, are decided on and it all makes sense you don't want lawyers you don't want them problems all right so get your splishies together okay the first thing is there's a songwriter involved all right now before we talked about there being you know five producers one songwriter and the producers are breaking it up the songwriters are breaking it up now when I say songwriter I'm not just talking about those songwriters. It's not omitting the producer. Back in the day, before we had all the, the dope, you know, equipment that we have now, you know, you had to write your music out on a piece of paper with notes, you know, and scales, and, and you have to write your bars and beats out. That's how licensing started years and years ago, and that's how it still is today. So if you're a producer, you are also considered a songwriter from a licensing standpoint when you actually get ready to submit your records. All right? So there's two parts of the record. There's the songwriter, and there's the, the publisher. Now, the songwriter is the person that gets paid performance royalties, which we're going to talk about in this video, right? The publisher gets paid mechanical royalties, which we're going to talk about in the next video because I don't want this video to be crazy long. Okay, so performance royalties. Let me break down the concept of what they are and, and give you an idea of where this whole thing came from. Because if you understand where it came from, you can understand why you're getting paid and how, okay? So performance records come from this concept right here. You're an artist, you made a song, you sold your song. Somebody went out, bought your song for $10, $5, whatever you sold it for, your album, or if you sold a single, $129, $0.59, cent, whatever you're selling it for. They bought that one record, right? And now they're going to go on the radio, and instead of making the tens of thousands or hundreds or 50 or however many people are listening to their station uh, pay for that record, they're just going to give it to them for free and say, here, everyone listen to what this person did. I had to pay for it, but you don't have to pay for it. That's wrong. And years ago, there was artists that stood up and fought 
for that right to say that no, you can't take our music and play it and, and not pay us. In addition to that, radios are you know radio stations are also you know making money off of advertising. So now they're making money off your music. They gotta pay you, right? So. Uh, in order for them to use your music, what the radio stations have to do is they have to license uh, your record. So think about it like a car. In order for you to drive your car, you have to have a license, it's, right? Someone needs a license in order to play your music. And in order to obtain that license, they have to pay for it. And ASCAP, BMI, CSAC's job is to police and make sure that they're paying what they're supposed to pay. How do they do this? Well, many radio stations have to submit song lists and logs in to these agencies in order to, you know, meet their regulations and rules and things of that nature. That's one way they track. There's also BDS and MediaBase and all these different uh, outside providers that are going in and have different techniques for tracking what's being played. And these organizations, each of them, have their own algorithm and system that they put together. And based off of that algorithm, they pay you accordingly. Now, when you say algorithm, you're like, sir, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it wasn't dope in algebra. Let me break it down, okay? So anytime your music is played, whoever's playing it has to pay out a license that is not limited to the radio station. It also includes club owners, karaoke bars, uh, restaurant owners, people that put on shows like ice skating shows and circuses. It also includes elevators and airlines. Anytime the music is played, somebody has to uh, pay on that license. Now every company calculates or society calculates this differently. All right, ASCAP, for example, has an interesting method that I've attached uh, on the website that you guys can go and look at. But one of the key factors is their licensing weight. Okay, so they have a use weight, a licensing weight. They have a follow to the dollar factory. Um, they also weigh by the time of day. They also do additional credits and bonuses um, to different people for different things. Okay, they add and multiply all these different things together, and they come up with the amount of money that the record is worth as a total. Then they pay that out out based off of the percentages that were written out in the split sheets okay so they figure out how much you're going to get paid total that's a hundred percent and then they look at your split sheets and see how you guys have divided that up and they divide the money accordingly so I hope that helped you answer uh, any questions that you may have on performance royalties and understanding how uh, you get paid um, when your music is being played. Now, like I said before, this whole process from performance royalties and mechanical royalties, which we're going to get into in the next video, all of this starts with your split sheet. So make sure if you don't have one, um, you go to www.phase6.com, go ahead and download yours and take the first step to handling your business as an entrepreneur. Like I said at the beginning, the day you decide to be a musician or the day you decide to take music serious is the same day you decide to be an entrepreneur. So this is the first step to getting on your business. Uh, well, the first of many steps that have to be taken to getting you about your business and learning how to make money. So that's how money is made, uh, basically from radio through royalties. We're talking about mechanicals next, um, so stay tuned uh, for Phase 6. Uh, go to the website, comment, tweet, Instagram, do all the other types of stuff. I answer more in-depth questions on the website. Check it out. Uh, let's do it. Phase 6. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting them out. This time we're going to be talking about mechanical royalties. Watch the last one. There's a lot of stuff that was left out. We may have had some questions. We're going to get deep into all of that. Real talk, no chase. Real talk, no chase.